as parents, we know how important it is to talk with your kids about bullying and what to do if it's happening to them. But it's also important that as parents, we know what to do if our kids are being bullied. That's yeah, so the last thing you want to hear. It's like, where do I even begin to help my child? Here to talk about it, Ronya Moncarius, of, CEO of Crime Stoppers Houston, uh, is here. As always, nice to see you. Thanks Thank for hanging you. out with us. I this love is it. A, this you. is a topic that we obviously need to continue talking about. And here we are, what, a little over a month into the school year. And mm -hmm. Sadly, the, there is a child out there somewhere this is happening to, right? And the parents Absolutely. are going, what do we do now? Yeah, right. so interesting. You guys mentioned 60% of kids reported being bullied. Here's a few more numbers. 70% will say, well, I know that there's a rumor that's been spread about me, but here's the most fascinating. 87%, almost 90% say they've seen somebody else be bullied. So what we're seeing, the difference is, you know, only 60% are reporting being, kids are trying to internalize it. Kids are trying to make, make an answer out of it for themselves and parents don't know what to do. So what we wanna do is identify what is bullying, what is the difference between a mean kid and an actual bully, yes. right. and then when, what do you do when it's online versus in school? And there's been a lot of changes in Texas. So parents now have uh, more options that we wanna make sure they're aware of. Okay, so talk about that because there is a law, David's law, yes. um, that parents Parents should know about. There are yeah. resources that schools have to follow this law. First, tell us about the law. Yeah, David's law, of course, you know, is the response of a young boy, David, who took his own life because of aggressive, horrific, relentless bullying. His mom, Maureen Molak, um, said this can't happen again. So she ran and she fought and she passed laws that made it uh, bullying and cyberbullying part of the district wide. Every school has to have a policy in place that covers cyberbullying. Additionally, parents now have resources. You, you can do more than just talking to the school, keeping record. You can actually go to law enforcement. You can work to have mm. a student, a bully removed from your child's class. Um, we need these tools in our tool belt because a lot of times we say we don't we don't even know where to go. Um, harassment statutes, Title VI, working with the districts in full. She has really empowered communities. One, you also have to report to parents. Before that wasn't the case. School districts now have to report to parents if a child's been bullied. It was much easier to look the other way or sweep it under the rug without this kind of help. Well, they didn't know what to do with the phones. Yeah. So bullying on campus, you know, hitting each other at recess or getting to a physical fight, the schools knew what to do with that. But if it's taking place in the digital space, the schools are like, is it our, is it our territory? Mm -hmm. But this law changes that. Cyberbullying is the school's problem if it affects the health and wellness of the student. And, and the impacts of the bullying are horrific. We're seeing kids have suicidal ideation, depression, anxiety. We're seeing kids withdraw from everything, from social activities, from school activities, from social media. We're seeing them become destructive, drugs and alcohol, self-harm. So we can't just sweep this issue under the rug. Yeah. What would you say, you and I talked about this mm -hmm. a, a, a few months ago, we did a story. Um, if the parents have been doing this, they have been contacting the school, and they don't feel like anything's being done, what do they do then? So contact the school, do everything in email, and if you have a phone call, send an email saying, per our phone call, this is my understanding, ask the school to respond to you within 24 hours to make sure that they're getting the same, they have the same understanding of the situation. If you've pushed and pushed, and parents, push, don't be afraid to push. Mm -hmm. it, and I understand that I'm a parent of three. We don't want to be that overbearing, you know, nothing can happen to our children. Bullying crosses a line. It's different than a child that's just kind of, you know, being mean or being immature. Push, push, push. And if your school doesn't deal with the other family, with the bully, whether it's um, separating classrooms, sending one to disciplinary school, maybe expelling a student because there are options, go to the district. There's no reason to stop. Go all the way up to the TEA mm. if you have to. We've got, the stakes are too high now. Yeah. If we don't advocate for our children, they're, they're killing themselves. Yeah. Well, be, and because they're, they're hiding whatever it is, the, the, the information, yes. maybe they don't talk about it or they don't report it, as okay. you said. And that's an issue. So we have to keep the line of communication open, right? We gotta to talk to our child, and then we gotta take that next step if we see something. But I think that's the issue. It's like, 
what am I looking at? Am I looking at bullying or am I looking yes. at just a nuisance? Yeah. So how do we address that? My thought as a parent is just to go right to it. If the child comes home and says, hey, this happened today and it was funny or yeah, weird yeah, or different, yeah. Yeah. I just email the teacher right away and say, hey, before this even has a chance at getting yes. out of hand, yes. is that too much? I don't think so. I really don't. And I think there's always a careful easy balance to strike and say, I just want to understand this situation. You're laying the foundation for nothing to arise. Um, but we want to take hold of this conversation and talk about it with our kids. Again, what do you do if you feel like you're being bullied? What is the difference between a mean kid and an aggressively persistent, harassing student? And then how do we make sure you don't become the bully? You know, we, we try to divide it. Every kid in every situation is a participant. They're the person doing the action. They're an enabler. They're, they're cheering something on. They're a bystander. They're just staying quiet. Or they're a disruptor, meaning I'm not going to do this. This is wrong. I'm not going to behave in this type of activity. Every kid in every situation is one of those four. Ta what, it, what are you going to do when you see somebody else get bullied? Would you ever be the lead bully? What are you going to do if you're the victim of bullying? Every kid today should be raised to have that voice and the confidence yeah, to say what they disruptor. need to say. Be a disruptor. Be a disruptor. Right. I love Some that. Some of the greatest celebrities and, are disruptors, by yes, the way. Yes, they are. Selena Gomez, huge disruptor. Mm -hmm. <laughs> One more thing, what about, as far as your child's phone is concerned, what is off limits to parents to be able to go through and, yeah. you know, what is where is the line limits? as parents? I know some parents are like, I don't want to go through their phone, but we should. Oh, this is like yes. a conversation for, like, do we have two hours two together? Hours. <laughs> I know. Nothing is off limits. I always say, kids, if you want privacy, get a diary from 1985, write whatever you want and hide it under your bed. And maybe no one should look at that. But within your phone, um, for me, when you're dealing with minors who have access to anyone, anything at any time and can be sharing anything with any, they shouldn't have an expectation of privacy. And we shouldn't feel like we're there, we're infringing on their space. You should, you know, check it, let them know you're checking it, have mm -hmm. honest conversations. And, you know, I hate the word consequences, but consequences when you find something you don't want to see as a way to mm -hmm. teach them. Yes. And then one step further, well, the story we had a little earlier out of the state of New Jersey, where the child in the school, as far as their opinion, the School Board Association of New Jersey, they don't have a right. And maybe we'll see this in other states, yeah. but the child doesn't have a right to privacy in their device in the school. Do you agree with that? It's so tricky. But, you know, when you think about it, and we were talking about it just a minute ago, the schools have a right to look through a, a bag or a mm -hmm. backpack or a locker if your school has lockers. Mm -hmm. If there's an incident that arose in school or affects the student body, what if there's a threat of violence against the school, an active shooter, or somebody's going to be selling drugs or pills? Does the school have the right to then go into that space and look at that? That's a very interesting question. Because you know they're going to point the finger later and say, well, why didn't you know or exactly. why didn't you look? So, but now you don't want them to look. You see, this is where we're not, we are not catching up. You know, legally, we, we always are behind the eight ball and trying to catch up to what's going on. And laws are formed, obviously, as precedence takes place. That's such an interesting question. Mm -hmm. I'll be curious to see what happens, especially if in If they Texas. bring it back to the Supreme Court or if anybody sues. I mean, they have two school districts sort of mandated it, and no one said anything yeah. at this point. But okay. We are out yeah. of time. We I could know. go on and on, Rania. We could chat for hours. But thank you so much you. for joining us. We'll definitely have you back, of thank course, you. to continue the conversation.